The aims of this guidance are firstly, to bring greater coherence to the national curriculum by exposing core concepts and demonstrating their progression from year one to year six. And secondly, to summarize the most important knowledge and understanding within each year group and important connections between them. This video guide summarizes the knowledge and understanding that year six pupils need to achieve by the end of the year in order to be ready to progress to year seven. There are accompanying materials which provide teaching guidance for each ready to progress criterion and example assessment questions. We recommend that year six teachers should read the guidance for both year five and year six so that they understand the starting point for year six pupils. By the end of year six, pupils should have a cohesive understanding of the whole place value system from decimal fractions through to seven digit numbers. And they should be able to read and write numbers from one hundredth to 10 million written in digits, beginning with the powers of 10 as shown here. And pupils should also understand the relationships between these powers of 10. Pupils should know that each power of 10 is equal to 10 of the next smallest power of 10. For example, 100,000 is equal to 10 10 thousands. And 1 million is equal to 10 100 thousands. Pupils should extend this knowledge to write multiples of these powers of 10. For example, knowing how to write 18 hundred thousands in digits. Pupils should be able to restate the quantity in the appropriate power of 10. For example, 1800 thousands is equal to 1,800,000. Once pupils understand the relationships between powers of 10, they should extend this to other numbers in the Catenio chart. They must be able to identify the number that is 10, 100 or 1000 times the size of a given number or 1 tenth, 100 100th, or 1000th times the size of a given number and they should associate this by multiplying or dividing by 10, 100 or 1000. So, for example, if we look at 500, 50,000 is 100 times the size of 500 multiplying by 100. And 500 is 100th times the size of 50,000 dividing by 100. This will prepare pupils for multiplying by decimals in key stage three when they will learn, for example, that dividing by 100 is equivalent to multiplying by 100. So pupils will leave year six understanding these two different ways in which place value units relate to one another, the grouping and exchange model and the scaling model. These models show the relationship between tenths and hundredths here, but pupils should be able to extend this understanding through the place value system. Pupils must be able to combine units from millions to hundredths to compose numbers and partition numbers into these units and solve related addition and subtraction calculations. They should be able to do this using standard partitioning, as shown here, or using non-standard partitioning, here shown with the decimal number. This supports mental calculation, for example, subtracting 30 centimetres from 3.42 metres. As well as understanding the quantity associated with numbers, pupils need to understand the position of numbers in the linear number system. They should be able to mark them on partially marked number lines at a range of scales, for example, placing seven digit numbers on a number line marked in millions. Or on a number line marked in hundred thousands. Pupils should also be able to make reasonable estimations about the position of numbers on unmarked number lines. Teach pupils to mark midpoints to support them with this. For example, 75,000 is the midpoint here. So 65,000 is about here relative to 50,000 and 75,000. And as for partitioning numbers, pupils should be able to extend this understanding through the number system for example, estimating the position of 3.42 in relation to 3 and 4. The midpoint of 3.5 is here, so 3.42 is about here. Pupils should also be able to identify previous and next multiples of powers of 10, which will allow them to round numbers to a reasonable degree of accuracy. For example, for a seven digit number, pupils should be able to identify the previous and next multiple of 1 million and of 100,000. 
and they should be able to round to the nearer of these without relying on a number line. Pupils should understand that the purpose of rounding numbers is to give an approximate value. So pupils will leave year six understanding these two different models of number, number as enumeration and number as measure, and they will be able to understand numbers through the number system, including decimal numbers, in both of these ways. Pupils need to be able to decompose powers of 10 into two, four, five and 10 parts. This shows the decomposition of 1 million into two parts, four parts, five parts and 10 parts. However, pupils need to be able to decompose any integer power of 10 up to 10 million in these four ways. This relates to number as measure because it allows pupils to use common graphing units. Pupils should be able to complete and read scales for integer powers of 10 up to 1 million, marked in two parts, four parts, five parts and 10 parts. And pupils should be able to identify numbers marked on continuations of these scales, as shown here. Two parts, four parts, five parts, and ten parts. Throughout Key Stage 2, pupils have learnt about and used two types of mathematical relationship between numbers, additive relationships and multiplicative relationships. In year six, pupils should learn to identify the additive relationship between two numbers or the multiplicative relationship. In year six, the latter should be restricted to integer multipliers, but this will prepare pupils for scaling numbers by fractions in key stage three. When given a sequence of numbers, pupils should be able to identify whether the terms are related additively or multiplicatively identify the specific difference or multiplier and use this to continue a sequence either forwards or backwards. In previous year groups in Key Stage 2, pupils have learnt about and used the commutative and associative properties of addition and the commutative, associative and distributive properties of multiplication. In Year 6, pupils should learn about the compensation property for both of these. Pupils should be taught to use the compensation property to simplify calculations such as 3 tenths times 320. And they should be taught that multiplying one factor by a number and dividing the other factor by the same number means the product remains the same. So here this simplifies the calculation to 3 times 32. Pupils should be able to combine their understanding of these properties of arithmetic with their understanding of inverse relationships and place value and apply these in additive and multiplicative contexts to derive related equations. For example, pupils should be able to explain how they would use the first equation to complete the second equation. Here, pupils first need to apply their understanding of place value to make the sum and both addends one tenth times the size to give this equation. And then they need to apply the compensation property, add 10 to the first addend, and subtract 10 from the second add end to complete the equation. Pupils should be taught to solve problems involving ratio relationships. They should be taught to describe one to many or many to one correspondences using sentences such as, for every one red bead, there are three blue beads. Pupils should be able to represent these correspondences in tables and they should understand that the generalization for every one red bead, there are three blue beads applies equally to all of these instances. Pupils should be able to solve problems involving ratio relationships, for example, working out how many red and blue beads there would be if there were 20 beads in total. Pupils should be able to extend correspondence tables and also identify the multiplicative relationship from a single unit to other values in the table. Pupils should also extend this to many to many correspondences. And these four examples can all be described by the generalization for every two yellow beads, there are three green beads. And pupils should be able to represent many to many correspondences in tables as well. Pupils should be comfortable working with and solving equations with two unknown values like this one. 
and they should recognise that an equation like the one here has an infinite number of solutions. Pupils must also be able to solve problems with two unknowns with only one solution. For example, finding two numbers such that the sum of their numbers is 48 and one number is one fifth of the other number. Here pupils are given one piece of additive information and one piece of multiplicative information. Pupils should be able to draw models to help them solve this type of problem. So here the model exposes the six equal parts, meaning each part must have a value of eight. One number is eight and the other number is 40. Building on their understanding of equivalent fractions from year five, pupils should be taught to simplify fractions which are not in their simplest form by identifying a common factor of the numerator and denominator. As they did in year five, pupils should recognise that equivalent fractions have the same value and sit at the same place on the number line. Pupils should be able to identify whether a fraction is in its simplest form or not without being prompted to check for this. By the end of year six, pupils should be able to compare two fractions and identify which is larger. Where the fractions are close in value, pupils should be able to identify a common denominator and use this to compare fractions. One third is less than three eighths. Pupils should be taught to identify where they can compare fractions by reasoning rather than by conversion to a common denominator. They should be able to compare fractions with the same numerator, such as these two fractions, two fifths and two sixths. They should be able to reason that because one fifth is greater than one sixth, then two one fifths must be greater than two one sixths. And they should be able to generalize that when fractions have the same numerator, then the larger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. In previous year groups, pupils have also learned to estimate the position of numbers, including fractions, in the linear number system and make judgments about the relative size of the numerator and denominator in fractions. Pupils should be able to use this to identify that five is a relatively large part of six, so five sixths sits roughly here in the linear number system, but that seven is a smaller part of 11, so sits about here in the linear number system. And they should be able to use reasoning like this to compare fractions. Before they move to year seven, pupils must be able to understand that the value of five sixths is greater than that of seven elevenths, despite both the numerator and denominator in seven elevenths being greater than those in five sixths. Through Key Stage 2, pupils have learnt to measure perimeters, angles and areas of shape, and they've learnt to draw polygons by joining mark points and draw angles of a given size. By the end of Year 6, pupils must be able to draw, compose and decompose shapes defined by specific measurements. For example, drawing a rectangle on squared centimetre paper with a perimeter of 14 centimetres, as shown on the left here, or drawing a pentagon with an area of 10 centimetres squared, as shown on the right here. Pupils should also be able to reason with compound shapes, for example, using the given length of seven centimetres on the rectangle on the left to find the perimeter of the compound shape on the right. Composing and decomposing shapes prepares pupils for solving geometry problems in key stage three, for example, finding the area of a trapezium by decomposing it to a rectangle and two triangles.